Welcome back, everybody. Overcrowding, violence and suicide have become... <coughs> Oh, I beg your pardon for that noise, unfortunately, just one of the, the trophies there on the side. But let's just move on with the story. It's become really commonplace in South Africa's prisons. The Judicial Inspectorate for Correctional Services, which monitors the facilities, has once again found these challenges as detailed in its annual report, which was released yesterday. Earlier this year, it had to investigate possible security breaches and the alleged involvement of an official that led to an inmate killing a female warder and raping another at Khudamut Prison in the Free State. To discuss this further from our Seapoint studios, we are now joined by Justine Gerica. She's for Eastern Cape Regional Manager for the Judicial Inspectorate for Correctional Services. Justine, thanks very much for being with us and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Thank you, Leanne. It's so an honor to be here. Overall, when we look at the, the, the state of correctional centers and we look at uh, crowding, would one say the situation is getting worse or is it improving? Leanne, uh, our findings over the past year, financial year, we have found that overcrowding is basically the same. So Most it has, of our okay. centres is, yes, is about 150% overcrowded. But also it differs from uh, rural to urban. I mean, that is that when one looks at that figure, a hundred and fifty percent overcrowded. I mean, this is this is very difficult, and one can only imagine that the 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 the, the circumstances within these correctional services um, facilities must be very very difficult to manage. Yes, and during our investigations and inspections in the centres, most of the time we find that we centres are overcrowded. It has a knock-on effect on everything in that center, the food, nutrition, health services, uh, you know, uh, bed space available, uh, plumbing services. Everything is affected when the center is overcrowded. Yeah. And, and this, the, the, the reality of the situation is that, as you say, the situation is not improving. It's kind of staying the same. So over the years, when you've done many of these these different researches and you've looked at your your uh, the, the circumstances and you've made recommendations what's ever become of them yes uh, we do make recommendations to correctional services after we have submitted a report um, and over the past year we there has been some improvement in terms of new facilities that have been opened and i know that another one is about to be handed over so from the side of DCS, there are strides being made to ensure that some of these uh, overcrowding figures are being addressed. Let's talk about some of the recommendations. What are you recommending? Um, in terms of overcrowding, if I can take you back a little bit to March this year, we have done a survey in overcrowding in most of the remand centres uh, countrywide. So we have done five centres and from that five centres we have interviewed about 1,100 inmates. Some of the things that they have uh, informed us on was in terms of bail. Sometimes uh, inmates are being given bail in court but they do not have the money to pay that bail. Uh, from the survey that we took it was around about 30% to 60% of inmates yeah. that doesn't have money to pay bail. Mm. Uh, then we can go to other things, uh, like for instance sentencing options. Uh, you know, in terms of the um, Criminal Procedures Act, there are various sentencing options that can be utilised other than incarceration. And that is also one of the problems that we have found, where uh, inmates are sometimes just being sent to jail instead of exploring what other options are available in communities. Yeah, and this, this is a real, it's a, it's a real problem. I mean, I'm looking at a couple of the figures that, that, that you released yesterday, and what it's saying is that yes. in South Africa, the prison population, that our prisons can house 162,875 
Uh, I beg your pardon, 118,572 inmates, that's the capacity. But currently yes. we're sitting at 162,875. So if you're saying yes. that there are other ways that, that, that not everybody needs to go to one of these facilities, what are the other ways that, that can be used to try and um, d make it that crime is still not a way to go? Because people may now think, okay, well, I'm going to get off lightly. I I'm not going to go to prison, so I don't need to worry. Yeah, otherwise, as I've indicated, Leanne, in the Criminal Procedures Act, there are a variety of sentencing options that magistrates can utilize. But also, even if a person is being a prison sentence, it means that uh, this is, or correctional services can, after some time, uh, evaluate the person, assess him, and that person can also be released on parole uh, or correctional supervision. So these other options are available and they can be utilized. Yeah. There's also the talk of, of, of having people put, you know, released for petty crimes. Now, what, what constitutes a petty crime? Okay, a petty crime in terms of our uh, legislation, Leanne, is any crime that has a sentence of between uh, one month to six months. Uh, sometimes up to two years imprisonment. That will constitute petty crimes. What kind of crimes are we talking about? Uh, just maybe you can just oh, educate we, us we, on that. Okay, yeah, we can talk about a variety of crimes uh, from being drunk on street, shoplifting for a, a very uh, little amount of money, um, housebreaking where uh, maybe there was no uh, damages uh, you know, extensive damages or basically a little, uh, things of little value were stolen. Uh, it can be a variety of things. Yeah. And then there's also the call from mm. the SAPS to say, if you make it that, you know, this is a lesser sentence, then people will commit crimes. So there's, there's almost this double-edged sword where it's saying, well, you know, if the, the environment in a prison is, is, is really great and, you know, it's not so harsh, people will feel, well, I'll go to prison, it's not a big deal. Uh, and if I do commit a crime, I'm not going to be sentenced anyway. So it's a very tough balancing act that, that we find ourselves in. Yes, it is. Uh, and that is where it is very important that all disciplines must be involved as well as the community so that there can be a common understanding when uh, a judgment is made or an order is being made in court uh, to release a person that other systems must kick in to make sure that the person does not reoffend. Mm. So let's let's talk about violence because that's another major issue inside of the the different facilities and particularly because of the overcrowding. So you see that violence uh, is very prevalent um, and and a whole bunch of other things overcrowding suicide cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we'll talk. Uh, soon about what actually happened at the Hudumot prison as well in the Free State. But, you know, the challenges yes. that are happening right now, what are the findings? What is going on? In terms of violence, uh, if I can speak about my own region in the Eastern Cape, we have had uh, extensive uh, thematic inspection being done at one of the biggest centres, which is St Albans. And one of the findings that we have found is that, um, you know, gangsterism, coming from the community does spill over into the center. So it means that if a person goes to a sentence and he goes uh, to prison or to a correctional facility, he is obviously taking his gangsterism with him. So uh, it, it means that within the center, this is has to carefully monitor and also place them in the various cells so that they do not uh, escalate the problem in terms of, of violence and gangsterism. Uh, they do have anti-gangster strategy and systems in place, uh, but always there will be ways and means to get around it as well. Yeah. But I am aware that they are also trying their utmost yeah. to yeah. at least make sure that it is contained. Uh, how prevalent are cases of officials being implicated in, in such cases of, of corruption and crime? I mean, we saw at Durban Westville prison last month when there was a raid, there was a confiscation of, of cell phones, drugs, yeah, a, a host of things as well. Yes. Yes, uh, thanks for that question, Leanne. We have been involved in the investigation in that centre and there was a report submitted also uh, with recommendations and I'm aware that DCS is giving attention to those recommendations. And the corruption of these officials, is it continuing? Is it quite rife? 
Uh, I cannot comment on the corruption, unfortunately. You know, the report also speaks about old infrastructure, a lack of proper maintenance, poor conditions at the, at the facilities. H how bad is the infrastructure? Yes. The end, our facilities are quite old. Most of the centers have been built uh, years and years ago, um, 40 years plus, and it needs a decent upgrade. Uh, in some instances, we really need new centers to be built, uh, where the uh, dilapidation is so bad. Uh, in terms of plumbing, in terms of even the cell capacity, uh, cells have been built earlier years to house maybe 20 to 30 inmates. Now it's housing 60 plus. So, uh, and that varies from prison to prison depending on the size. But uh, the overcrowding figures really does not do the centers any justice mm, mm. at the moment. Yeah. I mentioned that we would, we would touch on the, the, the Khudumut prison situation. There is uh, um, a, a finding, I would imagine there was also looked into. What are the findings from this incident? In terms of uh, the Khurumut uh, investigation, there was also a report submitted to DCS and some of the findings uh, was that there was some outstanding information and some of the findings was that there were security breaches. For instance, the person that uh, committed uh, the offence against the, the two women had previous serious offences and we were questioning why this person was placed in the position where he had access. Um, uh, to office, uh, the administration building and so on, where he was in the perfect uh, position to uh, commit these crimes. Mm. Uh, those in the types of information is still outstanding and we are awaiting a report from DCS. Yeah. All right, just as we wrap this up, despite all of the challenges that we've been speaking about, and there are many challenges we can see, uh, does the Department of Justice and mm. Correctional Services have uh, uh, something that they're doing right? I mean, is there, there things within the facilities that are working? Um, Leanne, I must say that there are pockets of excellence. Um, in terms of rehabilitation programs, DCS has got quite a number of rehabilitation programs in the centres uh, that are doing wonderful work. Community members that come into the centres that are doing wonderful work, members themselves. So we cannot uh, take a brush and tie everybody black. Yeah. There is definitely pockets of excellence uh, in my own region. I can speak of uh, one, two centers where they are doing excellent work with the youth, uh, where they are schooling, where they have access to various things. So yes, some things are working. All right, we leave it there for this morning. Thanks so much for talking to us. That was uh, Justine Gerica. She's uh, Eastern Cape Regional Manager for the Judicial Inspectorate for Correctional Services, talking to us about the state of correctional centres in the country.